I got every generation of 5G iPhone and the Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra, so we can find out which of them is the best for cellular networking. Each phone has lines on all three major US networks, and I tested them head to head in three different locations. So sit back, grab your snack, and enjoy the show. The first phone we have competing tonight is the iPhone 12. This was Apple's first ever 5G iPhone, and it was released in October of 2020. The modem inside this phone, which is the component that handles all the wireless networking, is the Qualcomm Snapdragon X55. This was one of the first commercial 5G modems to ever exist. The next phone we have competing tonight is the iPhone 13, which came out in September of 2021. Its modem is the Qualcomm Snapdragon X60. The next phone is the 2022 iPhone SE, designed to be a more affordable iPhone option. It uses the Snapdragon X57 modem. It also looks like it came out 10 years ago. It also doesn't have any magnets built in, so I gotta use one of these magnetic sticky rings to get it onto the magnetic mount. But this next phone does have magnets, the iPhone 14. Released in September 2022, this phone uses a Snapdragon X65 modem from Qualcomm. The iPhone 14 was a pretty big year for connectivity on the iPhone in general. Not only was the X65 supposedly a huge improvement over the previous modem, Apple removed the physical SIM slot on US models, forcing people with an iPhone 14 series device to use eSIM. They also added satellite connectivity in select countries for location sharing, texting, emergency services, and roadside assistance services. Next up is the iPhone 15 Pro, released in September of 2023 using the Snapdragon X70 modem. This was my phone for about a year, and I thought using it without a case would be a good idea. It was not. Next up, released in September of 2024, we have the iPhone 16 Pro, which uses a Qualcomm X71 modem, not the X75 like most other flagships from the same year. Could this be a cost-cutting attempt for Apple? Remember this for later because it might explain some of the final results. But with this next phone, things get even more interesting. This is the iPhone 16e, released in February of 2025, and it does not use a modem made by Qualcomm. Instead, it uses Apple's first ever custom modem, the C1. And so far, results with it are pretty mixed. Some say it's amazing, some say it's terrible. When I tested it against the Qualcomm modem of the iPhone 16 Pro, I found that it was pretty close in performance on Verizon, but pretty bad on AT&T and T-Mobile. However, this was not consistent with other people's findings, so hopefully tonight, the results will be a bit more straightforward. Our last phone competing tonight is the Galaxy S25 Ultra, and I wanted to include this phone because it's basically the best in the industry for cellular networking, since it uses Qualcomm's newest modem that cannot be found in any iPhone, the Snapdragon X80. And based on what I've seen about it, it is absolutely crazy. All of these phones are unlocked, fully charged on the latest software version, and they all have the same lines or plans from each of the carriers. They also all have the same apps that we're using for testing, Coverage Map and Nperf, and they also have special custom shortcuts that I made to streamline the entire process. So now that we have all eight of our phones ready to go, Let's go. The first location I selected for testing is the parking lot of my local Walmart. I picked this spot because it's pretty much the most busy area near me. In addition to Walmart, there's also a Costco, a mall, and several large hotels. It's also quite close to the Appleton Airport. Now that you know where we're at, let's get the testing going. I'll run one test on each phone and then repeat it so we get a total of two per phone. I did it this way because even within a few minutes, the load on the network could change, so this kind of keeps it consistent. So now let's get to the results. On the Verizon network, the iPhone 12 got an average download speed of 116 megabits per second, an average upload of 22.6, and an average ping of 51 milliseconds. For ping, lower is better, and for upload and download speeds, obviously, higher is better. Moving up to the iPhone 13, we got a noticeably better download speed of 179.5 megabits per second. The upload speed was basically the same, but the ping was quite a bit lower at 36.5 milliseconds. The iPhone SE was pretty bad, and you'll notice that a lot throughout this video. It got an average download speed of 66.3 megabits per second, an average upload of 15.8 megabits per second, and an average ping of 52.5 milliseconds. The iPhone 14 on the other hand was solid, except for that ping, but that was likely from a one-off test that happened to get a high ping. Out of all the phones here, the iPhone 15 Pro from 2023 got the best average download speed, at an average of 233.5, but that's not too far off from the latest iPhone phone and the Galaxy S25 Ultra. Upload speed between all eight phones was very similar, with the exception of the iPhone SE. The biggest takeaway here is that the Apple C1 modem from the iPhone 16e is struggling with download speed compared to its Qualcomm counterparts. It's over 26% slower than the fastest phone here, the iPhone 15 Pro, and again, that phone came out almost two years ago. On the AT&T network, we can see a lot of improvement generation over generation for download speed, but we can also see how that improvement streak broke with the iPhone 16 
16e, which overall got the closest results to the iPhone 13 and iPhone SE, both of which are pretty old, with the iPhone 13 being released in 2021 and the SE being released as the cheap model in 2022. Upload speed and ping are kind of all over the place here, which is one of the weaknesses of this testing process. But if I had to crown a winner for the AT&T network here, I'd say the iPhone 15 Pro because it's overall a great balance of everything. Download, upload, and ping are all solid relative to the results of our other phones. Finally, let's check the results of the T-Mobile network at our first location. This is where the Galaxy S25 Ultra with its Snapdragon X80 modem really flexes its muscle, performing noticeably better overall than the other phones. Meanwhile, both iPhone 16 models, the 16 Pro and the 16e, got concerningly low download speeds compared to not just the Galaxy, but older iPhones like the 15 Pro, the 14 or even the iPhone 13 that came out in 2021. In fact, the 2025 iPhone 16e got a 48% lower download speed than that iPhone 13. The newer phones do score a bit better for upload speed, but something seems off about these iPhone 16s, especially on the T-Mobile network. Finally, let's check the results of running each of these phones on NPERF, which does a comprehensive test of speed, websites, and video streaming. All of these are combined into a total score. The iPhone 12 scored 88,864 endpoints, which is the NPERF unit of measure. The iPhone 13 scored 97,330. The iPhone SE scored around 90,000. The iPhone 14 scored a tiny bit better than that. But the iPhone 15 Pro was the first to break 100,000 here. The iPhone 16 Pro is strangely worse, and the iPhone 16e is a lot worse with a score that's closer to the 2022 iPhone 14 than anything else. The S25 Ultra scored the best again with over 107,000 endpoints. Next, I went out to a golf course in a more rural and remote area near me, where the only strong signals on Verizon and AT&T were on LTE. T-Mobile still caught 5G UC out here, so yay them, but I mainly went here to see how these phones fared on older, less advanced networking. So let's get this testing going. On the Verizon network, the best phone overall continues to be the iPhone 15 Pro, however these results are all super close. The only number that sticks out is the oddly low average download speed on the iPhone SE. Oh well. AT&T's LTE was pretty rough out here, it kind of didn't matter which phone you use. There was also a lot of varying ebbs and flows between each of these results, so make out what you want to, but I don't think this is super conclusive. T-Mobile cooked out here on 5G UC though. With the exception of the iPhones 12 and SE, download speeds were generally close. But I bet you didn't expect the iPhone 13 to give us the best upload, did you? Also, we continue to see the side effects of the iPhone SE's cutback modem. The C1 modem in the iPhone 16e was also noticeably behind the best phones here, but it wasn't horrible. The nperf test here showed us that the newer phones aren't always better than the old ones. And by the way, this was on a rainy day, literally no one was at this golf course or anywhere in the nearby area. The nperf results here continue to show us that the best phones out of this bunch are the previous generation iPhone 15 Pro and the Galaxy S25 Ultra. Finally, I wanted to test the millimeter wave capabilities of these phones. So, Welcome to the bonus round. The iPhones SE and 16e don't support millimeter wave, so it really is more of a race between the other six. The location is Lambeau Field, where the Green Bay Packers play, and this testing was done the day before the first day of the NFL Draft. Yeah, this video really did take a long time to make, so if you're enjoying it so far, drop a like. And as you can see, I went right up next to this Verizon millimeter wave site. So how did the phones do? Unexpectedly, the iPhone 12 of all phones scored the highest average download speed, and the iPhone 14 beat every other phone on upload by a landslide. Again, the iPhones SE and 16e don't support millimeter wave, so they're connected to C-band instead. Overall, all of the millimeter wave phones performed relatively close to each other, except the iPhone 16 Pro, which continues the trend of being significantly worse than the 15. Something's going on here, and I don't get it. So after comparing every generation of iPhones since the 12 and the Galaxy S25 Ultra, what can we conclude about cellular performance? First off, yes, the iPhone 16e with Apple's first ever custom modem is not as good as the other phones that have Qualcomm modems. The biggest area it struggles is the download speed, which gets a lot closer to the 2021 iPhone 13 or even the 2020 iPhone 12 than any of the newer phones. So please, do not get the 16e. Not only is its cellular performance compromised, but you can also get a used iPhone 15 Pro for around the same price. And you don't need me to tell you that that phone is much better. And speaking of the 15 Pro, this phone surprised me. Despite being one year older than the iPhone 16 Pro, which is the latest and greatest iPhone right now, the 15 Pro destroyed the 16 consistently to a point where we can safely assume that the iPhone 16 Pro 
is worse than the 15 for cellular networking. And I have a pretty good theory as to why. The iPhone 16 and 16 Pro use the Snapdragon X71 modem from Qualcomm. Meanwhile, other phones that came out in 2024, like Samsung's Galaxy S24, use the much more common and widely used Snapdragon X75 modem. What's interesting about this is that you can't find this X71 anywhere on the Qualcomm website. No product listing, no spec sheets, nothing. And that's because while the X75 is a standard part that lots of companies buy to use in their devices, Apple chose to use a customized modem in the iPhone 16. It's not their own modem like the C1 from the iPhone 16e, but it's also not a standard part like the X75 is. My best guess is that Apple worked with Qualcomm to make this specialized version of the X75 to put in their iPhone 16, which would be cheaper for them. We already know that this is the direction that Apple is moving towards now that they're starting to make their own custom modems like the C1 in the iPhone 16 16e, and we're almost certainly going to see more Apple custom modems in this next generation of iPhones. So, solely by cellular speeds, the two best phones in this video were the 2023 iPhone 15 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra. Did that surprise you? If you're looking for the best phones in the US for cellular networking, now you know. However, if you're on a tighter budget and you still want an iPhone that has solid cellular performance, I think the iPhone 14 is still a good option. It absolutely came close to the iPhone 15. It almost always beat the 16 Pro and 16e, and you can get one used on Swappa for between $300 and $350 unlocked. I'd like to give a massive thanks to all the people listed on the screen for making this video possible, and to all of you for watching it until the end. Drop a like if you found it interesting, and subscribe so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.